Welcome to another tutorial on Autodesk PLM 360. In this tutorial we're going to cover users, groups, and roles. So the first thing we'll do is log in. So one way or another you have a login to your site. It might be administrator, sysadmin. In this case we'll log in and what we're concerned with this time is adding other users, assigning them to groups, maybe making other groups, and ultimately assigning these people to the various roles that we have inside of Autodesk PLM 360. So once we're logged into our site, we're going to come up to administration. So a, a, a word of notice, if you can see the word administration up on the top, you are logged in and you are one of the administrators in the system. If you cannot see it, uh, that means you do not have administrative rights. This is going to be useful later on when it comes time to log in and test out workflows as various people in different departments. So let's go up to administration and we're going to come to the area where it says users, groups, and roles. The users, groups, and roles area is where we're going to define the people in the system, group them together into logical arrangements, and then assign them to various roles that we have that define access to the workspaces. In other words, this is where we define our security model. So first, let's take a walk through. There are two users in the system. We have sysadmin and I have one that I've created for myself in this tenant for demonstration purposes. Both of these people have administrative login. Now when it comes to groups, we here at Autodesk have predefined some sample groups for you to use inside of PLM 360. We can come in and rename these, we can delete these, we can make them uh, inactive, but these are a good starting point, a good kind of a guess or a, a shot down the middle of what many customers would want to see. So we have everything from the admin group of which I'm part of and sysadmin. We have groups that allow access to outside people such as customers and even down here we have suppliers. And then down, this, down the rest of the list we have engineering, executive, legal, manufacturing and so on. And you can read the rest of these loosely follow personas or departments and this makes it nice in arranging the security model and the permissions for access within PLM 360 and I'm talking about these categories and the workspaces that come off of each one of these categories. So first let's create a new user. Let's take that workflow and examine the process of creating another user in the system. So we'll come up and click on new user. Now in the new user window a couple of things that we'll fill out. First of all we'll create a username for this person and then we'll specify a password and then confirm the password. So let's go and create our new user. We'll pick an easy one. We'll go with engineering and then we'll assign them a password. Be sure to note the password. Uh, optionally you can make this password something like change me and put a checkbox here and that says that users are required to change the password on next login which means they'll have a their temporary login like pass or password of change me but then they'll go and add their own and they'll be ready to go and use PLM 360. Next you need to fill out first name, last name, some of the other information but the critical information is to fill out first, last, email and organization. So we'll go and fill out these fields for our engineering user. So I'll make a, a user for this particular tenant and for demonstration purposes I'll say that well this is Ed Engineer put it in an email an organization and optionally you can fill out the rest of the address all the way down to postal. Uh, filling out the time zone would be good too. Set the preference of the unit of measurement and down here on the bottom we have create user so we can do that. We can create the user and we'll just have a new user. But oftentimes inside of PLM we'll have this next step. This is a little bit of a uh, time saver. So this will create and optionally add them to groups. So we'll select this one. For all new users that you intend on directly adding to groups, please select this. 